السلام علیکم اسٹوڈنٹس ویلکم ٹو یونیورسٹی آف ایجوکیشن لاہور ڈپارٹمنٹ آف انگلش آئی ہوپ یو آل آر گڈ مے اللہ شاورز ہز بلیسنگس ان دس کریٹیکل ٹائم آئی ایم نمان خالد آور کورس کا ٹائٹل ایز نائنٹین سینچری انگلش ناول پروگرام بی ایس انگلش اینڈ آور کورس کوڈ ایز ای این جی ایل تھری ڈبل ون فور اور ٹاپک آف کنسرن از گریٹ ایکسپیکٹیشن بائی چارلس ٹکن ناؤ لیٹ اس سی ڈفرینٹ پرسپیکٹیو اباؤٹ دا رائٹر اینڈ اباؤٹ دا ناول اسٹوڈنٹس ان دس لائٹ یو سی اے پکچر اٹ از دی پکچر آف the writer Charles Dickens and you also see two dates mentioned in these slides one 1812 and second one is 1870 1812 is the birth of the writer Charles Dickens and 1870 is the death date of Charles Dickens this is beautiful Victorian novel this was Dickens second to last complete novel it was first published as a weekly series in 1860 and in book form in 1861 early critics had made mixed reviews disliking dickens tendency to exaggerate both plot and character now let us see some important characteristics of dickens novel <clears throat> students in this slides you see some characteristics of dickens novels first character is about the title of the novel was extremely important to dickens while he select a title he always kept in mind what the title is for and what are the imp- important perspective behind this title second one dickens use suspense and mystery you you see there is always a mixture of mystery and suspense in dickens writing third one novels rely heavily upon his use of symbolism for example you see symbolism in how he uses fire hands the mist the river the signpost in the great expectation you see these symbols in different part of the novel and you can easily understand why he use these symbols in this novel fourth point Dickens used comedy as a relief from the serious and unhappy section of his novel. As you know, comedy is also an important part of life and when people and when people see seriousness and unhappy in life, he wants comedy in life. So that is why Dickens used a mixture of comedy in in his writing great expectation and last one is writes from the point of view of the lowest classes living in a large cities he also compare and introduce both classes the upper class and the lower class in his novel and you see how he completely a uh, completely engaged both the classes in his writing which is truly be understandable by the students now student here you see a brief intro intro about great expectation after moving its introduction let us see that this novel is divided into three stages in first stage of great expectation the writer present pip as an orphan being raised by an 
unkind sister who resent him and her husband who offers him kindness and the love pep is the protagonist of the novel while his sister and his sister husband mr and mrs jo they take care of him in the second stage you see pip life take place in london where he becomes friend with mr pocket while in the last and the third stage pip life solves all the remaining mysteries of the novel now in the given slide you see some brief intro about the novel many of the events from dickens early life are mirrored in great expectation which is his most autobiographical novel pip the novel's protagonist live in the marsh country works a job he hates considers himself too good for his surroundings and experiences material success in london at a very early age exactly as dickens himself did in addition one of the novel most appealing character wimmick is a law clerk and the law justice and the courts are all important component of the story london a teeming mass of humanity lit by a gas lamps at night and darkened by black clouds from smoke stacks during the day formed a sharp contrast with the nation's sparsely populated rural area more and more people move from the country to the city in search of greater economic opportunity throughout england the manners of the upper class were very strict and conservative gentlemen and ladies were expected to have through classical education and to behave appropriately in innumerable social situations these conditions define dickens time and they make themselves felt in almost very facet of great expectation pip's sudden rise from country laborer to city gentleman forces him to move from one social extreme to another while dealing with the strict rules and expectation that govern victorian england student these are some brief intro about great expectation written by charles dickens now let us see after reading this novel which points you see in increase in yourself or you can see what are the objective behind these explanation students these are sub objectives you see first one to give students a general overview of the novel's plot to critically analyze important points from the text to discuss text from different theoretical angle to highlight different literary technique used by the author develop cognitive and critical thinking by analyzing a variety of text to learn core aesthetic of fiction and to learn to analyze fiction comprehend listening material and develop listening skill reflect on their own learning develop their intellectual independence through analytical activities these are some objectives which are clear after reading this novel students here is our desired topic great expectation by charles dickens we analyzed summarized the critical commentary as i discussed early the novel is divided into three parts part 1 part 2 and part 3 firstly we discuss part 1 that is from chapter number 1 to chapter number 19 now 
let us see some analysis and commentary on these chapter students in the first section dickens introduces us immediately to pip who serve as both the young protagonist of the great expectation and as well as the story's narrator looking back on his own story as an adult secondly with this two level approaches dickens lead the reader through your pip's life with the immediacy and surprise of the first person narration while at the same time guiding with an omnipotent narrator who knows how it will all turn out thirdly the adult narrator pip will foreshadow future event throughout the story by using science and symbol these three points is the complete background of the whole novel part 1 part 2 and part 3 firstly dickens himself present in the form of pip secondly when pip approaches to adult and last one he foreshadow the whole story his future stories in the form of signs and symbol dickens uses this duality to create to great effects in the first chapter where we are personally introduced to pip as if we were in pleasant conversation with him i gave pip as my father's family name the narrator pip then present an interesting and prophetic relationship between the boy and the bullying man this initial meeting between a small boy and a convict will develop into the central relationship in the book it is the relationship which will cause pip's great expectation for himself to rise and fall both narrator and protagonist pip is naturally the most important character in great expectation the novel is his story told in his words and his perceptions utterly defines the events and characters of the book as the result dickens most important task as a writer in great expectation is the creation of the pips characters you see students that the creation of the pip character is basically the character in which the whole story whole words which are used in this novel whole perceptions events are totally beyond the protagonist that is pips character now the point of discussion is about the growth of pip as a character how pip move forward how his growth as a character dickens most important task as a writer in great expectation is the creation of the pip character because pips is the voice with which he tells his story you can see that the writer use pip as the weapon through which he move the whole story dickens must make his voice believably human while also ensuring that it conveys all the information necessary to the plot in the first section pip is a young child and dickens masterfully uses pip's narration to evoke the feelings and problem of the childhood you see that the writer used in first part as young child and from the, his childhood his early childhood he represent the feelings and the problems which are in early childhood in the in our life he totally 
represented in the form of Pip's character and it is totally be nourished in the form of him. When the convict questions him about his parents' names, Pip recites them exactly as they appear on the tombstones indicating his youthful innocence while simultaneously allow, allowing Dickens to lessen the dramatic tensions of the novel's opening. Here you see how innocent he is. When a person asks him about his parents' name, he just standing in front of his parents' tomb. He just read in the tombstone and just read it out and tell them. As befits a well-meaning child whose moral reasoning is unsophisticated, Pip is horrified by the convict, but despite his horror, he treats him with compassion and kindness. As Pip sees the man, he is firstly be horrified, but later his treatment make him and his kindness, his compassion make him realize that he is a good person. Throughout this session, this section, Pip's self-commentary mostly emphasizes his negative qualities, his dishonesty and his guilt. This is characteristics of Pip as a narrator throughout Great Expectation. Despite his many admirable qualities, the strongest of which are compassion, loyalty, conscience, Pip constantly focuses on his failure and shortcomings. Here is the theme of self-improvement. You see, as the novel progresses, the themes of self-improvement, particularly economic and social self-improvement, will become central to the story. In that sense, Pip's deeds, Pip's deep-seated sense of moral obligations, which is first exhibited in this section, work as the kind of psychological counterpart to the novel's theme of social advancement. Here is another tool, which is dramatic setting. Dickens uses setting to create dramatic atmosphere. The setting of the book always set the tune for the actions and reinforces Pip's perceptions of this situation. When the weather is dark and stormy, trouble is usually brewing and when Pip goes alone in the mist shrouded marsh, danger and ambiguity usually await. In this section, Pip's story shifts rapidly between dramatic scene with the convict on the marshes and comical scenes under Mrs. Joe's thumb at the home. Here you see a complete dramatic sen uh, setting in which you see the weather, the tone, the actions and the Pip's perception about the situation. How beautifully the writer arrange all these dramatic tools in a regular mean. There you see the narratives and mastery of plot. In terms of narratives, the introduction of the convict is the most important occurrence in the plot of the first section. Though Pip believes that the convict appearance in his life is an isolated incident, he will feel this character influence in many ways throughout the novel. Here the new plot development. Though Pip has no sense of the importance of the event, Dickens conveys its importance to the readers through Mrs. Joe and Pamela Cook, who are obviously acoustic at the idea of Pip be friendly and wealthy old women. This is the first hint in the novel of the theme of the social class and social improvement, which will quickly become a dominant idea. Here, the themes of self-improvement as a dominant theme. Dickens continue to emphasize the idea of self-improvement. 
just as Pip's behavior indicate a desire for moral improvement and Mrs. Joe's amb ambition indicate a desire for social improvement, Pip's struggle to learn to read indicates a desire for intellectual and educational improvement. To emphasize this point, Dickens contrasts Pip's Maguire's knowledge with the ignorance of Joe, who admires Pip's poor writing because he himself is an able to read or write. The Child as a Narrator Dickens demonstrates a masterful ability to tell his story effectively without ever losing the perspective of childhood. Though the novel itself is narrated by adult Pip remembering his life, Pip the character is still a little boy in this chapter and the narrator comically and sympathetically conveys his immature impressions. Themes of Social Classes Throughout Great Expectation, Dickens explored the class system of Victorian England, ranging from the most wretched criminal, Magwitch, to the poor peasants of the marsh country, Joe and Biddy, to the middle class, Pummel Cook, to a very rich Mrs. Havisham. The theme of social class is the central to the novel plot and the ultimate moral theme of the book. Pip's realization that wealth and class are less important than affection, loyalty, and inner worth. Pip achieves this realization when he is finally able to understand that, despite the esteem in which he holds Estella, one social status is in no way connected to the one real character. Themes of Ambition and Self-Improvement Ambition and Self-Improvement take three forms in Great Expectation, Moral, Social and Educational. These motivate Pip best and his worst behavior throughout the novel. First, Pip desire moral self-improvement. He is extremely hard on himself when he acts immorally and feel powerful guilt that spurs him to act better in the future. Secondly, Pip desire social improvement in love with Estella. He longs to become a member of her social class and encouraged by Mr. Joe and Pummel Cook, he entertain fantasies of becoming a gentleman. Thirdly, Pip desire educational improvement. This desire is deeply connected to his social ambition and longing to marry Estella, a full education in a, is a requirement of being a gentleman. These three ambitions or themes you see in different categories which are set by the writer. There is a turning point in the novel separating Pip's young childhood in the humble company of Joe from the beginning of the Great Expectation in the company of the higher society. The chapter presents a relationship between Joe and Pip which is growing in love and respect. Joe is at bottom of the social hierarchy and particularly at the bottom of the household hierarchy but Pip's find new respect for his positions. Dickens uses Strong imagery to describe Mrs. Havisham House, the manor house or stealth house, as a baron of feelings or even life, even before we meet the bitter Miss Havisham and the rude Estella. Pip's first taste of higher society is a bitter one and it leaves him ashamed and embarrassed rather than justifiably angry. Pip is in fact just a toy for both Miss Havisham who wants him to play and Estella who want him roughly while at the same time flirts. The Technique of Foreshadowing Foreshadowing is used promin prominently in Great Expectation. Foreshadowing pairs naturally with the novel's retrospective narration where events from the past are described by the character looking back and reflecting upon them and long time span. Pip narrates even from the perspective where he can see how one thing lead to another and he will often give the reader hints that something is going to be important 
thereby foreshadowing later plot events. For example, after describing his first visit to Satis house, Pip pauses to reflect that that was a memorable day to me, for it made great challenge in me. In looking back on this event for later in his life, Pip foreshadow future events that will stem from his fateful encounter with Miss Havisham and Estella. Here is another technique, is the technique of suspense. This section abounds in mystery and foreshadowing particularly relating to Mrs. Havisham characters. What is the reason behind his bizarre appearance, her behavior and her home decor with its top clocks and crumbling releases of an earlier time? At this stage of the novel, Dickens does not answer questions, only raises them. The reader's natural curiosity will help propel the book forward. Here the introduction of the strange characters. Pip is introduced to the number of strange characters, but more importantly, he is given some more hints about Miss Havisham's strange lifestyle. It is clear that the decay of her and the house team for her wedding day that none of her relative dare to mention. Mrs. Havisham's relationship with her relative Georgina, Sarah, Pockets, cousin Raymond and Camilla is even more loveless than her relationship with Pip. For her relative, their visit to Mrs. Havisham is based on Crete, hoping to please her enough to be given some of her money at her death. It is ironic that he loveless environment of the Satis house is representative of her higher society that Pip would like to rise to. The relationships of the house are based on money and power, while the relationship at the forge with Joe is based on mutual respect. Pip feels unnatural with how to he act with this kind of society as in the case when he feels guilty for hitting the pale young gentleman. Dickens is criticizing a Victorian tendency seen even today of looking down on the common laborer as dirty and of less value than the more urban man leading a wealthy, layerly lifestyle. Instead of gentleman and his scene of work is help us as idea. Dickens' criticism is on two levels, one, against the society which enforces these values and two, against the individual like Pip, who adopts society's value despite their better judgment. Other type of imagery is Gothic imagery. Mrs. Havisham herself with her manical energy and her in Scrutable motives is a frightening creature to Pip. Despite her wedding dress and outfit that symbolize hope, regeneration, and reign well, he constantly thinks of her as a symbol of death. Her insane behavior, crisping around her house in a wedding dress with a wedding feast on her table, and all the clocks stop, will soon be explained. But for now, it is simply add to her mysterious and powerful dramatic presence. Surely a woman this eccentric wouldn't be above transforming an orphan boy into gentleman, he thinks. With this line of thinking, the first of Pip's great expectation creep into his life. Pip as a puppet. Although Pip increasingly believe that Mrs. Havisham intend to make him gentleman, Dickens create dramatic irony by giving the reader a sense that the old woman has no such intention in mind. Dickens indicate that Mrs. Havisham is not really interested in Pip at all but only in somehow using Estella as a weapon against men. As the novel progresses, the source of her strange hostility will become clear. Estella as a tool of revenge on men, training her to break men's hurt as her own hurt was broken year ago. Pip is her test case, an experiment to measure the young girl prowess at the winning 
the love of man toward this purpose miss havisham is delighted by the speed with which pip falls in love with astella internal versus external struggle the fight between jo and orlick emphasizes this theme of starting divide good and evil orlick's slouching lumbering badness is a powerful contrast to jo's quiet inner goodness and their fight gives a physical presence to pip's internal struggle as pip enter adolescence dickens gradually changes the presentation of her thought and perception when pip was a young child his descriptions emphasize his smallness and confusion they begin to emphasize his moral and emotional turmoil pip becomes more aware of the qualities and character of the people around him he remains from complaining about life in the forge out of the respect for joe role in his childhood contrasting character just as orlick is an immediate contrast to joe betty emerges in this section as a contrasting figure to astella her plainness frankness and kindness are diametrically opposed to astella cold beauty dishonesty and cruelty pip seemed to feel a natural attraction to betty but his overpowering passion for astella make him use betty only as a mean to an end as a confidant and as a teacher here is another perspective that is about the romantic idealism pip has a deep seated strain of romantic idealism and as soon as he can imagine something better than his current condition he immediately desires that improvement whenever he meet astella he longs for love and beauty and when he acts poorly he feels a powerful guilt that amount to a longing to have acted more morally this is the psychological center of the novel theme of the self improvement guys that's all from the part 1 analysis and critical commentary now let us move toward the part second and part third in the next lecture okay thanks and i love this